أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تقدموا بين يدي الله ورسوله واتقوا الله إن الله سميع Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's compassion to the humans in general. I'm going to give you some examples of how he was to the humans in general. Muslim, non-Muslim, anyone. As we said, his main aim was to invite the people and call them from falling into disaster. In this world and in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had commanded him that he must go out and invite the people and call them to worship one God and to save them with sincerity from hellfire because neither God nor his prophets want anyone to be burnt in hellfire not one of them so the Prophet Sallallahu after he called the people of Mecca Allah ordered him to go outside of Mecca and call another people the following story mother and sisters Wallahi I've read it many times it always brings tears to my eyes when I remember my beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This place which he had gone to was a ta'if. It's a common place known in Saudi Arabia today. At that time they were full of people who worshipped idols and were non-believers. It's about 60 kilometers away from Mecca. So he went on that journey with his freed slave. Like he had a slave whom he bought and then freed him. That was a common practice of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he ordered and advised his companions to do the same thing buy slaves and free them so he freed his slave named Zayd ibn Hari and they went out to a ta'if as soon as he arrived to a ta'if he spoke with the first man he saw and said with the most greatest wisdom of words and the kindest manner the Prophet Sallallahu used to approach them and say I am the messenger of God and God has brought the Quran to you and used to recite and to them to prove to them how this is not words of man and then he would advise them and tell them the commandments and the prohibitions and the wisdoms which Allah Subhanahu brought to him the first man scorned him and said away from me O crazy man so he went to another man a leader of this and he said to him couldn't God have sent any other messenger than you and then another man said to him he said if you truly are a prophet then I am not worthy of listening to you and if you are not a prophet then you're a liar get away from you insignificant man scorns after scorns until finally he stayed there for more than seven nights ten days more than ten days calling the people and trying to address them Wallahi with his full heart trying to save them so they got sick of him not one of them responded not one they got so sick of him that they wanted to exile him and throw him out he was an unwel unwelcome guest so they brought the children, young boys and girls, and they brought the women behind the boys and girls. And then the men, the slaves and the servants behind the women. And then their leaders stood even behind them watching and laughing as they subjected the Prophet ﷺ to a narrow path. Imagine now a line on this side and a line on this side. Boys and girls, women at the back, servants and peasants on the other side and they're all throwing rocks at you spitting at you throwing dirty material filthy impure things at your face at your at your legs and and swearing at you in a land which is so strange to you and you don't know anyone there and you've come to them with a true message all you're doing is just inviting and saying pure words of kindness and you haven't harmed anyone and this is the way you've been treated the Prophet was Zayd walking between these two lines they threw the filth at him وسلم, until his legs began to bleed on both sides and Zayd ibn Harid tried to protect him and he was injured in his head and the blood was seeping from him subjecting him to a, a few meters down almost about two kilometers all on his side children women spitting at him cursing him abusing him laughing at him pointing at him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam almost a 42 or 43 year old man until finally at that time very tired and exhausted he sought refuge in one of the numerous gardens. He sat tired beneath one of the trees of the gardens. And the people left him. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent two sons of Rabi'ah. And they felt a bit of remorse for this man. 
So they said to their servant, they had a slave, a Christian slave, and his name was Adas. So they'd go and take this tray of grapes to that man. We feel sorry for him. So Adas, the Christian slave, went to the Prophet and he gave him the grapes. Then the Prophet said some words which shocked Adas. He said, Bismillah. Because when we eat, we say Bismillah in the name of God. The man Adas looked at him peculiarly and said, When did you learn these words? These words are not common to the people of this land. I've never heard them before. The Prophet looked at him with a smile because that's his character. Even though he was treated so badly by all the people of the city. Listen to this carefully, brothers and sisters. I have a very important message here. He never ever generalized. Every single individual was a potential Muslim and a potential good person. He looked at Adas and smiled. And he asked him, O oh, oh person, where are you from? And Adas said to him, I am from a place called Ninawa. The Prophet ﷺ said, Ninawa, the place where Yunus ibn Matta is from? Jonah. Adas looked at him and said, asked, how do you know Adda, how do you know Yunus, Jonah? Tell me about Jonah. It was mentioned in the Bible. The Prophet, peace be upon him, then said, Jonah is my brother, meaning his brother in prophethood, and he is a prophet of God, and I am also a prophet of God. As soon as he said that, Adas began to kiss his forehead and his hands and his legs, and he began to cry. The, his leaders who were looking at him, they raced, raced up to him and said to him, Adas, come back here, come back, what are you doing? They brought him back and they said to him, don't follow him, your religion is better than his religion. Don't get stung by him. And Adas looked at him, at them with crying face and he said to them, Wallahi, by God, because that's what they used to say. No man, knows what this man knows about Jonah except for another prophet. At that moment, my dear sisters, the Prophet wasallam said his famous dua, which is so emotional and preserved till today. An encounter of how the Prophet wasallam expressed his distressed soul to us. He lifted his arms up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's what every Muslim does brothers and sisters. When you are in stress, when you are in despair, when you are in loss of hope, say Ya Allah, turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, Ya Allah, O oh Allah, ila man tatrukan. Sorry, he said, Allahumma, to you alone I complain of my weakness, my insufficient ability, and my insignificance in the eyes of the people. You are the most merciful of all mercifuls. You are the Lord of the helpless and the weak. O oh my Lord, into whose hands would you abandon me to? Into the hands of an unsympathetic, distant relative who will angrily frown at me or to me to have control over my life? O oh my Lord, but if you are not angry with me, then all of this does no, no longer matters to me. All of it doesn't concern me. Your pardon is ample enough for me. I seek the protection in the light of your face, which illuminates the darkness. May it never be that I should ever earn your anger, or that you should ever become angry at me. And there is no, no power or resource except with you, O oh Allah. When all else fails, my brothers and sisters, your companion is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet ﷺ complained to him. And do you know what happened? On his way, Jibreel alayhi salam, the angel Gabriel came down. He said, I, I felt like a cloud was above me. I looked above me, it was Jibreel, he had come down. And he said to me, I have with me the angel of the mountains. If you want, you can. Then the angel of the mountains said, O messenger of God, we know your distressed state. And we know how these people have treated you. If you want me, I will crush them between the two mountains. I will crush them and destroy them. Just say the word. Now what would one of us do, brothers and sisters, in this situation? At least we want some revenge. Do you know what the Prophet ﷺ said? You see, it's in his nature to be compassionate. He said, La, no. 
for maybe Allah will bring out from their pro- from their progeny, from their loins, from their children, who will believe in the one true God, Subhanahu wa Taala. Do not destroy them.